Okay, here's a very basic bullet integration tutorial for version 2.66, just to help you get started if you haven't seen any others so far. It's quite straightforward. So I just have a couple of planes in here. These are rigid body objects. So you just bring up the toolbar with T like this, and then uh, down in here, you have these rigid body tools right in here. So this is one thing you want to use. So I'll just kind of give you an idea over in here in the scene. I'll just add a cube to the scene. A mesh cube. Where is it? Must be below the scene somewhere. Oh, it's, oh, it's way back there. Oh, okay. Well, not for long. All right, so there it is in the scene like this with these others. And then uh, to make it do something, you have to make it active. So I just make that active. And then if I'm going to drop it onto this plane and I want it to respond or bounce off that plane, I have to make this plane passive, which it already is, but I'll just duplicate it so it's like that. So you'll see this change when I press Alt A. You'll see the cube falls down and lands on there, as well as all this other stuff that's going on in here in the scene. I'll show the animation to this here in a second. All right, so that's the basics of just adding a rigid body effect. That's a lot simpler than trying to do a soft body where we were doing you know vertex groups and assigning values and setting all the parameters so of course you know rigid bodies means they're rigid they don't deform in shape unlike a soft body will but this has certain advantages as well all right so th that's just for the basics so you can get started and goof around and play play with things so those two matter and then the other thing that matters is over here in the physics tab associated with that you also have this these areas down here rigid body right here rigid body rigid body constraints so you'll need to take a look at those but uh, something that's really important is on the cache and notice I don't see a cache enabled here so usually with the animation systems they default to 250 frames alright so in the case of this cloth object say for instance I've had it has a cache associated with it and I've right in here and I've had to go into this cache and I changed it to 450 in here, but that did not affect the rigid body simulations. These are all rigid bodies in here. And so to, if you want to change the cache for the rigid bodies, you have to come into this scene box down in here. And then down in here, you have the rigid body cache and rigid body field weights like this. All right. And then I changed it in here. So between those, that'll help you get going in the scene. Now this animation here is similar to the other one that I posted earlier today, except it's what's different is I have cloth that runs across it, and there's collision detection on these as well as being rigid bodies, so that you can have them like concurrent. And that's nice because you can, like on this. Well, let me just get the animation. And I'll show you. All right, here's the animation rendered. It was about a two-hour rendering. Uh, to do it, it's mostly must be the animation. So, now notice in here on this, all these little purple like lavender objects are have rigid bodies. But notice the first set that comes down. Let me see. I'll stop it here in a second, and I'll run. I'll give you run it again in a minute. Where is it? Yeah, these, these are rigid bodies, but there's no collision set on those, so they won't interact with the cloth. All right, and they'll run those through, and then this next set that comes down here in a minute, those, all these I have, they're also rigid bodies, so they're interacting with the surface, but, I all, but they also have collisions set with them, so they do interact with the cloth. The other ones that were on there won't interact with the cloth. So it's a pretty interesting system, so you can kind of mix and match the best of both worlds. And I'll just let this run a couple times so you can kind of study it or take a look at it. Yeah, see that with a cloth hitting the top of those, it won't affect it. But you could make rigid bodies out of that with rigid body joints. That'd be a little more work. And there you go. So I was kind of looking for holes in it or problems or things like that, but it was pretty clean. I mean, I, it just it works nice, and there's a lot of things I could do with it already. So uh, the programmers did a great job once again. So kudos to them. All right, well, that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next video.